Hello friends welcome to Movie Flight channel hopefully you are all well and stay safe. I am so glad you are here. Dear friends please like and subscribe the channel. Also. See the description. Let's start the movie summary. 1996, treasure tracker Brock Lovett, Bill Paxton, and his group on board the exploration vessel Kaldish scan the disaster area of RMS Titanic for a jewelry with an intriguing precious stone, the heart of the ocean. They recuperate a safe containing a drawing of a young lady wearing just the jewelry. It is dated April 14, 1912, the day the boat struck the icy mess. Rose Dawson Calvert, Gloria Stewart, professing to be the individual in the drawing, visits Lovett and recounts her encounters on board the boat. In 1912 Southampton, 17-year-old five-star traveler Rose DeWitt Bucator, Kate Winslet, her life partner Cal Hockley, Billy Zane, and her mom Ruth, Frances Fisher, board the Titanic. Likewise boarding the boat at Southampton are Jack Dawson, Leonardo DiCaprio, a down on his karma sketch craftsman, and his Italian companion Fabrizio, Danny Nucci. Youthful Rose, irate and troubled that her mom has evidently organized the marriage, considers ending it all by bouncing from the harsh, Jack figures out how to pull her back over the rail after she loses her balance and almost falls into the propellers. Found with Jack, Rose lets Cal know that she was looking past the brink and Jack saved her from falling. Cal is uninterested. However when Rose shows some acknowledgement is expected, he offers Jack a limited quantity of cash. After Rose finds out if saving her life implied nearly nothing, he welcomes Jack to eat with him in top of the line the next night, alongside a few noticeable top-notch travelers, including the Countess of Rothes, Archibald Gracie, Bernard Fox, Thomas Andrews, Victor Garber, Molly Brown, Kathy Bates, and John Jacob Astor, Eric Brayton, and his better half. Jack and Rose foster a conditional fellowship. However Cal and Ruth are careful about him. Following supper, Rose covertly joins Jack at a party in second-rate class. During the party Cal's steward, Spicer Lovejoy, David Warner, covertly slips down the second-rate class flight of stairs to keep an eye on her. After an extremely tense breakfast the next morning, wherein Cal shows a tendency towards viciousness, Rose turns out to be considerably more troubled about her forthcoming marriage. Ruth underlines that Rose's marriage will determine the DeWitt Bookater's monetary issues. In the wake of spotting Rose, Cal and Ruth out on the boat deck, Jack covertly slips once more into first class and attempts to caution Rose about the thing she might confront. Rose repels Jack's advances, yet later understands that she leaned towards him over California in the wake of meeting on the bow at nightfall. Rose takes Jack to her stateroom and shows Cal's commitment present, the heart of the ocean. At her solicitation, Jack outlines Rose presenting bear wearing it. In the meantime, in the first class smoking room, Cal's head servant illuminates him that none regarding the stewards have seen Rose at all that evening. Cal orders the steward to view as her. Rose and Jack figure out how to avoid C. Rose and Jack figure out how to avoid Cal's guardian and have intercourse in an auto inside the freight hold. They later visit the forward well deck, and keeping in mind that on it, the posts spot an ice shelf straightforwardly in the boat's way. Orders are given to turn the boat hard a starboard and run the motors full toward the back. Yet the boat takes excessively lengthy to make the turn and the starboard side scratches along the ice sheet, making significant harm the watertight compartments, including the freight hold where Jack and Rose had been having intercourse in the vehicle. Jack and Rose observe the impact with the chunk of ice and hear the officials and planner talking about its earnestness. On the scaffold, manufacturer Thomas Andrews, Captain Smith, Bernard Hill, the boat's officials and White Star Line Managing Director Bruce's May, Jonathan Hyde, examine the harm. The water has arrived at 14 feet over the fall quickly and has overflowed five watertight compartments. Mr. Andrews cautions that in view of a planned defect, the water will pour out over the highest points of the bulkheads at E-deck, and this will make the boat sink. He gives 60 minutes, two and no more, for the boat to stay above water. Cal finds Jack's sketch of Rose and a ridiculing note from her in his protected alongside the jewelry. At the point when Jack and Rose endeavor to tell Cal of the impact, he has his steward slip the accessory into Jack's pocket and blames him for robbery. He is captured, taken to the master-at-arms office, and bound to a line. Cal places the neckband in his own jacket pocket. With the boat sinking, Rose is frantic to free Jack. She escapes Cal and her mom, who has boarded the raft, and protects him. They return to the boat deck, where Cal and Jack urge her to board a raft. Cal claims he can get himself and Jack off securely. After Rose sheets one. Cal tells Jack the course of action is just for himself. As her boat brings down, Rose concludes that she can't leave Jack and commits. Jack faces her, indignantly from the beginning, however his maddens before long goes to warmth and they share a progression of kisses at the lower part of the grand staircase. Cal, 
seeing this, takes his steward's gun and pursues Rose and Jack into the flooding top of the line Eden Cantina. In the wake of spending his ammo, Cal acknowledges he gave his jacket and thus the jewelry to Rose. Jack and Rose are compelled to escape underneath decks to get away from Cal, and barely avoid suffocating themselves. They become caught behind a locked door, yet Jack figures out how to free them similarly as the rising water arrives at their heads. Out on the boat deck, Cal chooses to make his own departure. He helps the first officer to remember the course of action made before, however the official irately turns on Cal and will not permit him boarding. At the point when he detects a lost youngster taking cover behind a winch, he takes the kid and is in this way permitted into a folding raft by Chief Officer Wilde. As Cal and others board the folding, the water floods into the extension and wheelhouse, suffocating Captain E.J. Smith and making Cal's boat get drifting going the deck. At this point the harsh is gazing to emerge from the water and the excess travelers are running farther and farther rearward. Subsequent to overcoming a few hindrances, Jack and Rose return to the boat deck. Every one of the rafts have left and travelers are tumbling to their demises as the harsh emerges from the water. Water currently crashes through the enormous arch over the grand staircase, suffocating those travelers caught inside. Jack and Rose arrive at the extremely harsh, where they had initially gotten, and take together situations on it by moving over the rail, close to Chief Baker Charles Jockin. The boat breaks 50, making the harsh accident down into the water and killing Lovejoy, the head servant. As the bow severs it maneuvers the harsh back up high, leaving it staying there briefly. Jack and Rose ride it into the sea as it loads up with water and afterward plunges to the base. As Jack and Rose let go of the harsh, the Titanic vanishes into the obscurity underneath them and the two of them swim to the surface to end up in a huge horde of travelers and group. In no time, Rose and Jack track down a piece of framing from the grand staircase, and he helps her onto the wooden board just light enough for one individual. Holding the edge, he guarantees her that she will bite the dust an elderly person, warm in her bed. He passes on from hypothermia however she is saved when 5th Officer Lowe and a few crew members return to attempt to track down survivors. With Rose stowing away from Cal in transit, the RMS Carpathia takes the survivors to New York. There she gives her name as Rose Dawson. She later discovers that Cal ended it all in the wake of losing everything in the 1929 Wall Street crash. Lovett leaves his inquiry subsequent to hearing Rose's story. Alone on the harsh of the Keldish, Rose takes out the heart of the ocean, in her control from the start, and drops it into the ocean over the disaster area site. While she is apparently snoozing in her bed, Photographs on her wardrobe portray an existence of opportunity and experience, part of the way propelled by Jack. A youthful Rose gets back to the boat, from the outset, a miserable wreck on the base, yet as Rose arrives at the promenade deck the boat starts to shine with light. As she enters the grand staircase she is welcomed by the individuals who died on the boat, including the Titanic's band, First Officer Murdoch, Thomas Andrews, Jack's companions Fabrizio and Tommy Ryan, and remaining at the clock is Jack himself. He broadens a hand and they rejoin, to the blissful cheers of the died travelers and team.